Hello, welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. Adam Mobbs here with Phil Buzz Rothfield, Michael Carianis. You okay, Buzzy? You look a little tired. I uh, went out to the footy. Lucky I didn't get the soccer last night. Lucky I wasn't getting a train and out of the place. Oh, what can about I, that? Can I ask <laughs> a question, Buzz? Hello, everyone. Right. How long did you stay dressed in your gear for? Because you posted a photo very, very early of Eight you in a, in, a, in a jersey and I a scarf. I had it on all day. I had it on all day. Wow. A bit woofy when I took it off last <laughs> night. How, how the, I'll I, tell you something, Can we though, get photos shown on this thing? Right. On no. the podcast? Um, yeah, I had a lot of comments about that outfit, but anyway, this was a sad way to exit the tournament, but my goodness, it was a great night there last night. I've never heard more noise anywhere. When Sam Kerr kicked that miracle goal under so much pressure, you expect to see those things at training, but, and I thought if that was a match winner, if that had got us through, that yeah. would be a ball of the century, Shane mm. Bourne moment yeah, in Australian yeah, no sport. Doubt. No doubt. Um, yeah, well, I took my son out, Jacko, and we had a bit of dinner and a couple of beers, but I was okay to drive home. See, there was um, what, a, what a performance from Sam Kerr. With, you can see why she's a world-renowned goal scorer. That was just yeah. top bins, great don't be, shot. I want to be a party pooper. She did miss a sitter a couple of minutes later. Ooh. That is my soccer intel. Yeah. And then they scored. Where, where did your intel come from? This Red Marie Tommy, <laughs> can, you, can, and you, great. can you stay out of this conversation? It does our podcast no credibility when. Well, it can't just be a loving, like can that. it? She did miss. Did she not miss a sitter? A couple yeah, of minutes she missed later. that header. Doesn't matter. What about TV audience? It doesn't matter. Seven they lost. Seven point one million. Imagine they won. Mm. Mean? Anyway, I, I, I honestly final. loved it there last night, even though we lost. I did set loved it. No, it was amazing. I've been there moment. for Origin. I've been there for Olympics. Bledisloe Cups, never seen anything like it atmosphere-wise. Did you see Federation Square in, in Melbourne after yeah. Sam Kerr kicked that goal? Went nuts. Did it? Nuts. Yeah, it was I'm sure crazy. the whole country did. Yeah. No, it's a shame they lost. But you know what? We're back to normal programming. We've got Rugby League. Ba- and you know what? This has caused... Rugby League's been through a tough period. The comp stops, I reckon, for six weeks during Origin 6 to 8. And then they bumped into the World Cup. Yeah, mm. so it's been a long time since we just fully concentrated on NRL and finals, and at least there's enough and the, air time and the now television the ratings have been really badly hurt, really badly hurt. And well, I've been watching I'm, the footy I guys. I don't know about I you. I wouldn't Aww. have been surprised if Andrew <laughs> Abdo and Peter Volandis were cheering for England. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it's it. only one more hey? week. There would have been one more game. One more game. Well, Sunday night wouldn't have aff- yeah wouldn't have affected them. Maybe so that would have been all right. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, the Matildas are gone, and they're not the only ones as well. Tim Sheens, uh, which was a surprise to just about no one, that his two-year tenure as coach before handing over to Benji Marshall pulled up about a year short. Mick, what can you tell us? Yeah, an interesting development there out of the West Tigers. Obviously, there'd been rumblings uh, the last couple of weeks that um, Tim Sheens was either looking to, to exit the club or the club was looking to, to break away from Tim Sheens, but... You speak to people at the club and, and they're adamant that it was Sheens' management who approached the Tigers last week to tell them of um, Tim's desire, I guess, to to step down from the head coaching role. I think the initial conversation was about keeping Tim employed at the club and you know, either returning to a head of footy role or uh, something else in in the office staff. But as, pro- as conversations progressed, they, they decided to have a clean break from, from Sheens and he's out the door, whether he stays on in an ambassador role or some sort of minor role. Uh, I'm not sure there's suggestions that he'll go back to the UK once the season's over, but um, it is no doubt for, a, it's been a grueling year. He's, he's 72, Tim. I was going to ask you, I'll butt in. Give yep. Tim Sheens a mark out of 10 for what he's done since returning to the club. Out of 10, I, I think it's probably the same as I give the entire organisation a three. Yeah, I was going to say the same. Mm. Yeah. What about the Tigers? Oh well, yeah, they, he approached us. It wasn't it wasn't us that did it, but they didn't do their due diligence, Mick. He'd been so long out of the NRL. He'd lost three coaching jobs in England, or one was a manager job. Okay, and he came back. He sacked Michael Maguire. 
right, who, yeah. in my view, had the club going better than what they are now. Yeah. I think they've gone backwards. Yeah. Not only sacked Michael Maguire, he put poor old Brett Kamali in charge and he tore the team apart on Kamali and let Luciana Leilua go mid-year to the Cowboys, their best forward. Yeah. He let David Nofaluma, their great outside back, go to Melbourne Storm and I, he was set up to fail. Yeah. He was dead set, set up. Oh, yeah, there was a hand grenade. And you know what he did then? Then he threw himself into the job. You know. Yeah. You're being generous giving him a three. What would you give him? Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's call it two and a half. We'll meet in but the But you see what I'm talking about? No, no I, get, I, get, I get it. And They've I gone think back. They got, they got dazzled a little bit, I think, the Tigers' hierarchy by Tim Sheens' obvious footy now, right? When he came, when they invited him, or when they poached him to come back as head of football and the guy knows league, right? You could sit there and talk to him but all did, day. They didn't it. ring the people in England and say, why was he just I get that. Or I, I why get did that. he leave those and jobs? There was the romanticism around 2005 and I was sick of, oh, like, honestly, oh. <laughs> I was sick about here in 2005. Like, if I'm a Tigers fan, like, a remarkable season, one of the great all-time years. 18 but years ago. We can't it? keep comparing what's going on now to what no. we did in 2005, which is the rhetoric that we heard uh, throughout the off-season and I was getting... I was getting over it to be fair, but um, it's that I can't remember a rookie coach taking over a club that's won successive wooden wooden spoons. It is a tough, tough ask of Benji Marshall to come in now and and, and take over a roster that's on the improve. I've said it here for weeks that I'd rather the Tigers roster than the Dragons roster next year, as it stands. Mm. And this is. A rookie coach who's had one year, yeah, one it's... year as an assistant. Andrew Webster started coaching in 2008. Yeah. So Cameron Serrato uh, started coaching as soon as he retired, so 2013, 2014. Jason Demetrio, Adam O'Brien, yeah, all the hold guys. On. You, guys know, you guys know that the Sheens-Benji-Marshall combo was a PR move. Pasco was... Fiasco was getting smashed. Lee Hedgepentalis were getting smashed. Benji had a good job on television at Fox Sports and they thought, we've got to do something to appease the fans. No, here. I think it's unfair to label it a PR move, Buzz. I, it I was. Think, well, I think they well, generally, what else is it? Well, I think they, no, I he's think been they, coaching the side for three months anyway. I think they generally thought it would work. And that they're different. I, I, I don't it think... It buys them more time, they thought. No, nah, I, I don't think you can... I think it's unfair to label it as a PR move. Um, you can question the decision, the decision, no doubt, but to to say it's a PR move, they I think had, it's a the bit board unfair. and the CEO had to take pressure off themselves. You've just said Benji's untried. Now he's got t- double wooden yeah, spooner. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm questioning. So why did they do it? Why I'm, didn't they get Webster? I'm questioning the decision. Why didn't not they get Webster? A PR move. Yeah, Andrew Webster would have been great. John no, Morris, but the PR John Morris, wouldn't have been as good, would it? John Morris was Benji's sexy. Linked to the role as well. Benji. Is an all time favourite. Yeah, Benji's favorite a winner. There. Benji's a. Why didn't they get John Morris in the first place? Why didn't they get Justin Holbrook? Why didn't they get Andrew Webster? I agree with all that, Buzz. I agree. I agree with all that. They pulled the wrong rein last year when they, or you know, before that, when they appointed Tim Sheens as head coach. It was the wrong. It was the wrong decision. And general manager of football. We got to be no, fair. The to general here. manager of football is probably more suited to where Tim's at at the moment. Why didn't they fire Phil Gould like Canterbury did? You know, go for a big hitter. You know, he'd Tim been Sheens around. is a big hitter. He'd been out of the game for 10 years, Mick. Yeah, he'd been I, moved like, on from three jobs. No, no. I, he, he won his competition 18 years ago. I, I know you can't look at history. I, 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 I get all that, Buzz, but he's a heavy hitter. He still carries some weight in the game, Tim Sheens. And I I thought when they brought him back to, to be head of football, I was comfortable with that decision. I was not comfortable for him to be head coach again. I think that it was just too far gone for where the game was at. But head of footy, well, originally he was appointed. Remember, his f- original appointment was Pathways. Don't mm. forget, was overseeing that. And then the story came out. The head that, of football is nearly a tougher job than a coach. No, yeah, but don't forget the, the the story then came out that they'd appointed. Well, they were appointed him, but he hadn't signed on the paperwork, so he got in, he got parachuted mm. into the head of footy role. So I think they had good intentions to get Tim Sheens back to the club, and I think the Pathways role. Would have been absolutely perfect for him. Yeah, no doubt, pathways, no, not, no not questions, head of football. N- no questions whatsoever. And then that snowboard into a head of footy role, into a head coaching role. And now they're going to throw Robbie Farrer in, correct? He's in what the mix. Experience he he's had. In, he's has in he got mix. uni degrees and all that. Yeah, sort of, I, th- I think Robbie it? did yeah, a, right, okay. a commas degree while he was playing. Okay, just wondering. Um, 
Very, very, Untried very, very in, intelligent guy, Robbie Farah. But maybe he needs to spend. A, he he probably does need to spend a little bit more time in in the office um, to get an understanding of how salary cap works and how how those sort of things play out. But there's no doubt he's keen on on the on the GM role. But speaking of people at the Tigers yesterday, uh, I think Benji's going to have a major say on who the GM's going to be, mm. which he didn't. You're with his very quiet here, Adam. I'm just if letting you, you two know, go. If you were being paid a dollar a word, I reckon you'd be on about three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you. You've done right. the intro and nothing else. Right, my two cents. Thanks for your intro. <laughs> <laughs> the optics of bringing Tim Sheens and Benji back had a massive whiff of romanticism about it. But well, which buzz, is PR. Which is PR for mine. But they um, didn't do that for that reason. I know, but it took didn't hurt. pressure off the didn't board. Hurt. How Bring many, how many people? Up. How many people? I haven't got my words in yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm not getting paid yet. So. Yeah, he's Jeez. on eight bucks now. I've got a, I'm <laughs> going to put a taxi to meter here. Yeah. <laughs> I did talk to Tex. That'll make it easy for, to count what you get. Nice. Again. Now, what about you? Talk about Robbie Farrow with potentially moving from the role he's in now to yeah. head of football. So it's it's the worst kept secret at the place that him and Dave Ferner are not seeing eye to eye. The fellow assistant there. So one of them is going to – you think it might be Dave Ferner who might go as a result, which you guys reported on yesterday, uh, looking at what, John Morris coming in. Why would John Morris want to come and join this club with what's going on there? Yeah, it is an interesting one. He's Must be good pay, Rose. And he's really tight with Benji. They played together. And um, What's wrong with Fernsey, by the way? Why don't you get on with Fernsey? I wrote a story when he was with Baz at Canterbury. They didn't get on either. I'm not sure, but you can have the. He's not a Jackson Hastings of coaching. Oh, that's another nicest bloke. That state, is. That's what it? I mean. What's wrong? <laughs> that is another blunder by the Tigers. Tim Sheens letting Jackson Hastings go to sign Aiden, Aiden Caesar. Oh, but that mate, is a can blunder. Can you believe it? That is a blunder. Do your top ten signings in sitcom tomorrow, whatever your column's sitcom. called. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> Sportcom. Do your top ten that signings. Was a power play and to get it and yeah. make sure wrong, you whack him in high. I'm not doing my top ten yet. But, but what about maybe we can do it next week? So on here. On on the Hastings sign. Phil yeah. from Cronulla. <laughs> on the Hastings decision. Is it that because, was Sheens. That was Sheens. Because he was is it because he was a Madge man? Jeez, he was very he was espousing Madge's virtues when Madge oh, yeah. got sacked that time. He was a Madge man. He was a guy that Sheens thought was probably too slow to play halfback and, and wanted him to play thirteen. And we said this so many times last year when Luke Brooks was injured, I couldn't understand why they didn't give the Dewey Hastings combination a go at some stage mm. last year to just to give it a chance and, and have a look at it. But they didn't do that and we've seen what sort of season Jackson Hastings has had um at the at the Newcastle Knights and Is he playing this week? I doubt it. Mm. I doubt it. Um but he just frees up Caelan Ponga. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Imagine him with Jerome Buller. And he Buller. could have freed up a few Jerem West Buller. Tigers too, yeah. Young Buller. Imagine young Buller on the outside. The one yeah. bright light at that club this year, Buller. What a player. Yeah, they, like... Is he your rookie of the year or not quite? He's up there, yeah. Mm. He's up there, definitely. Khan Pereira at the Titans been great. Jacob Preston at Canterbury has been terrific. Yeah. Katoa at the Dolphins. I know he hasn't had a lot of headline moments, but he's done well to play in the halves week in, week, week out. Yeah. I know he's played a little bit yeah, off the bench and, this, and, and hooker. Not in this debate, though. But no, it, Buller for mine. But remember we were having the conversation with Terry Reader and the Dolphins at the start of the year that, you know, he'll come in, we'll ease him into first grade, you know, we'll, we won't rush the kid in. And as things would have it, he just he banged down the door, didn't he? He made them... Like, Pick yeah, him because yeah. of how well he was performing, and obviously just, they had issues uh, with uh, Anthony Milford's fitness at the time. And yeah, uh, he looks a player. Yeah, he's yeah, and, and he's tough the big position. Big Melbourne Storm winger, boys. Will, Will Warbrick. Warbrick. I love him. He's as a two age winger. He is a beast. He's just fallen out of favour a little bit there, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't he play last week? I know he's got an error in him, but I think he's a great player. Well, same with Zach Hosking, I think, has been playing really well. Filled in at yeah. the centres the last couple of weeks. He's been named in reserve grade this yeah. week. Zach, who's had a, a great year. Again, he's another. he still qualifies as a rookie. We had this discussion the Play other week. Play centre three-quarter, bench, mm. edge forward. Yeah, they've been terrific. So, yeah. so where, does, where does this go from here now? Mick, can you see crystal ball time eight months from now? Yep. Where are the West Tigers? Bottom four. I still think they're a bottom four. I still think the Dragons are a bottom four um, side. I don't see enough improvement in those rosters. Um, the what they're going to bring in. Improvement in coaching at St George, though. No doubt, but that roster that roster's horrific. 
The yeah, Dragons I still think reckon there's going to be a bit of movement. I'm saying as it is right yeah, now, yeah. right? Like, yeah, right. If they can sell off some of the players and, and get that you know million dollars plus, but there's still not a lot of talent out there. If you look at no. who's off contract... I reckon Ben Hunt's settled now. I really do. Well, they need him. And I he was hasn't talking to people great. last weekend and there's been a little bit of doubt with he's genuine. He wants, I'm told he's genuine. Yeah. And you look at Lomax and Surly. Oh, the jury's out in Sloan still, isn't he, at fullback? Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, I uh, I don't like their pack. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. The squad is terrible. You've yeah. just talked yourself into mixed point. No, I haven't. <laughs> I have great faith in the coach. Oh, mm. He needs to recruit players. He really does. Mm. You're a disloyal fan. <laughs> How old were you when you started going to Cogra Jubilee over? Oh. How old? How many years ago? Oh, as young as I can remember. We used to go. Well, we used to go half. You a thirty year fan? Yeah, easy, yeah. We used to go half time. And now you're just under putting the boot in. Yeah. Your How old were you when you fell out of love with them? When, uh, when did this happen? Oh, Pick and stick. Ninety two grand final, when they lost the Presidents Cup to Western Suburbs fifteen fourteen. I think it was. That was wow. my first heartbreak. Wow. And then you just became used to it as a Dragons fan. They had a good team. There was like Nathan Brown, Gordon Talis in that team. Anyway, that's my life story. Yeah. Over to you. Yeah, memory lane. Yeah. Right and then up. they lost the first grade. That didn't help. <laughs> I was about to say, a couple of grand finals those years. That 92, 93, 96, 99. Yeah, I was there. Mm. Just looking at that monitor, Mick. You're looking good. Thanks, Buzzy. Have a look at you. There you hey. go. It's just the What's lights. doing up top? There's a bit of hair going there. There's not much doing You'll finish up, up like me in about three years. At least I didn't go bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I used to have, have hair run. like you, like the curly hair. Mm. When I was at Did school, you? I had a bit of like, curly Mate, hair. I had an afro as Yeah, a I had a bit of an afro too. Girls loved it. Did they? Kills they get the girls it. buzzy. Yes. This is great for the podcast audience. I just While we're getting loose, I had <laughs> well, a... Well, <laughs> we, we're on TV now. I was wondering, Buzz, were you listening to um, SEN this morning? No. Oh. Because we had a text message when I was on during my highly rated segment. Yeah. Um, Phil from Cronulla. Oh, really? Sent a text in saying, hey, guys, um, can you tell Michael that I really love his podcast with Buzz? Sorry, Mobsy. Um, uh, it gives me laughs every Thursday. So there's right. a shout out to well, Phil from Cronulla. I thought I it might have been you. I got pulled up outside Northies and I went <laughs> with Dean Bulldog Ritchie yeah. for lunch. We had a snitty last Friday. And this fellow was down from the Titans yeah. uh, to watch the Titans fan, to watch him play the Sharks. And um, no mention of the Daily Telegraph, what's the buzz, Monday buzz. No <laughs> mention of NRL 36. Oh, mate, what are you having for dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> what have you said? Jungle <laughs> chicken. Oh. Uh, it was like I was so to I've, I've built you quite a profile. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like I think I've built it quite myself the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the Origin discard, don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway. Oh dear me! Speaking of Origin discards, Buzzy, nice segue. Shock retirement this week of Tavita Pangai Junior. Wow, who saw that one coming? I certainly didn't. And Not walking away from the game. No, and I'm really, really disappointed by it because you know what. That guy has not shown it, but he has the ability of Hargreaves, Fisher Harris, Tino, and Har I honestly, genuinely believe he could p potentially be in the top two or three props in rugby league. But for some reason, there has been an environment at Canterbury where he has not been able to show anywhere near the sort of form that he's capable of. And I wrote when we first broke the story that there would be a payout involved because no one walks away from $750,000. But Cameron Serraldo insists that there was no payout. I, I'm not, I, I just don't know why he would do that. That's a but crazy But you know what? I just don't think he likes Sydney. Yeah. He's never settled in Sydney. I would take short odds that he'll play for the Dolphins next year. He'll have a couple of off-season fights. And they've got, you know, the Bromwich isn't getting any younger, is he? And no. the, the, what's the old South front rower? The Mark board, Nichols. Mark Nichols. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And if there is one man in rugby league who can get the best out of this outstanding but underperforming player, it's Wayne Bennett. We had a question on that from Ryan. So you've answered that. Sorry. Mm. No, that's all good. And Wayne Bennett is a known fan of Tavita Pangai Juniors as well. Yeah. Enjoyed coaching him up at the Broncos and had the same sort of raps that you did of him, Buzz, of what kind of 
front Caleb rower Broome, he could be. He could be a top three front row in the in the game. I don't think he's consistent enough. I no, think, that's my point. Yeah. If he, I don't think he will get to that level. No, mm. I think he could, but I don't. I think he's got the ability to, but I don't think he ever will. I think he becomes, you know, if you had Tavita for four to five hundred in your cap then you can carry the style of player that he is to float in and out of games and a bit dynamic, not at 750. If I'm Canterbury, with all due respect to Tavita, I couldn't sign the release papers quick enough just because of the money that he's on. Mm. Um, but I'd nearly rather have him than Takiara on 500, who's had six Super League games and Middy had a broken body when he left the Roosters <laughs> to relax in England. He went, said he France. went over no, there. No. Chill. <laughs> Come he's, on, mate. He's been chilling. <laughs> Maybe he's fresh now, Buzzy. <laughs> He's fresh. Mm. There is so much fascination around the Bulldogs next year. You've got a unhealthy fascination with the Bulldogs. No, it's, how do I have an unhealthy fascination? Sorry for trying to hold a club to account for repeated failures. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what are you giggling at, you fool? Hey, well, uh, how do you reckon they're going to go? Oh, uh, like a busted. <laughs> Give Gus a mark out of 10. Three. <laughs> oh, now there is our loop. <laughs> what about you? No, I'd give him. I'd give him a five. No, actually. What are you giving him? Four. For? I'm giving him four. I have four. Four. Why? Um, Explain yourself. He has signed a lot of players. He signed some decent players. Whether they've been the right players or been able to. Um, well, mate, he did put gone. Pang Eye on nine hundred thousand dollars with the Broncos money. It hasn't worked out. Does he? Come back to a two and a half because of that signing. I'm going to stay at four. What are he you? signed Josh Reynolds, who quit midway through. This is my right, Josh Holding. Reynolds, Franklin Pele, Andrew Davy, New Brown, four signings. Well, don't why'd you give him a four then? Oh, I think the rest of the signings have been all right. What are you giving him? Three. <laughs> they need to sign middles. They, yeah, they've been like half gone. Back mobs Franklin in. Pele's gone. It, Wait, you're not, you're not doing anything without go forward. They've yeah, got Max well they, King and Liam looking, Knight starting they, this they've week. They've been looking. Like they wanted Daniel Safidi. They were going to go all in on Daniel Safidi before the Knights called on on that one. Obviously, Payne Haas was heavily linked to the Bulldogs as well. But like the situation at the Dragons, for 24, there is no one on the market. Mm. There is no one. That's going to change your club. Is that, is you that know, an issue be for a lot of clubs? Currently? For 24, there's not. There's no... There's no there's no game changers on the market. 25, there's a few, but even then, there's there's not a lot. You look at, you know, the Jordan Rickies of the world, Foot Awakers off contract, um, Jacob Safidi's off contract, um, Toby Rudolph, Satili Topanua, maybe Stefano, depending on mm. what happens. Jeez, you've done your research here. You're spitting um, out name after name. I've got a point to make. What year did Adam Reynolds leave South? Two years ago. This right. is his second season. Why Brisbane. didn't... Any club outside of the Broncos have the vision. I'm talking the Titans. I'm talking the Canterbury Bulldogs. Well, your Sharks try to sign him. Yeah, Canterbury Bulldogs, and I'm talking the West Tigers. Why didn't they see what the Broncos saw in him? And the, the Sharks went in hard for him too, right? if Canterbury had Adam Reynolds, I'd be more, much more hopeful that they could be a top eight contender. You would. But and, and this is where it comes back. and We get back to Tim Sheens and... That I'm not sure if Tim was here when he was available, but great general managers and recruitment and systems like that can recognise. I don't think he would have been. I'm not sure. Um, mm. And this is the issue. So I work obviously at ABC with Luke Lewis, and Luke Lewis is adamant that Matt Burden had to get a plug in. That uh, Matt, Bur <laughs> that Matt Burden's the centre. He's adamant that Matt Burden's best position is. Can a I mention two KY enough. Big Sports Breakfast? No. Seven oh five every Monday. <laughs> You still got a shift on SM? <laughs> Didn't you still a late shift? Or? No, no. <laughs> not, not since that we came SEN. That was back page or whatever it was. What was no, it? That was the old Macquarie punted. Sports News. Oh, you've, been Macquarie punted. Sports Radio. you've been punted from a few organisations. Mate, <laughs> I'm in the middle chair here. Just be very careful, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've got Dave Ricky Mate, out there. He's hungry. Yeah. He's young. I wish you well. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you have been part of him a few. Do you want me to go on? Do we have a summer <laughs> podcast line up with because Buzzy won't, I won't be, here. be here? I know. I'm on long service leave. Do we have a <laughs> summer Mate. line up? I, I think we can get away without it just quietly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Liz, look at this. I'd bring for team in for me. She's got more idea than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bring Ricky Owl Crawley in. 
There's some some talent there. So we add in, or was, I'm going no, to. You, you should go too. You're, yeah. <laughs> we're a package too. Is that what you're saying, <laughs> Muzzy? You've had more leave than any colleague you're I've worked with in 48 mm. years. Incorrect. I had one stretch last year. It was the summer of Carianus. You've had one baby. Yes. Right. Yes. How long did you take off? Three months. Was it three? <laughs> it was. It, it was, was close it to was, yeah, two and a half. Close, yeah. Six weeks of annual leave plus a month of paternity mm. leave. Yeah, you, you found well, you found all close enough. Huh? Mm. I followed better yarns when I was on holidays though, than <laughs> yeah. I've got lately. <laughs> he was. Re- oh, I don't want to tell his lovely wife Clara, but he was ringing, begging to file things for me. <laughs> he was away. Only the good ones. Get out doing nappies. Only the, <laughs> no, I can change a nappy. Oh dear. Uh, so looking at this weekend, huge. We're, we're talking about this eels roosters sudden death. So let's have a look at this. Twenty eight points at the top eight at the moment. Both teams are currently on twenty six. The Eels have a for and against of plus 21, which has been ripped apart, or plus 100 close to uh, recently. The Roosters are negative 84. The Eels finished their season with Roosters, Panthers, and a bye. So they need to win their next two games, Cover have the bye Cover your ears, to get Mopsie. to 32. Bye. They're gone. And then the Chooks have to beat the Eels, Tigers, and Rabbitohs. Over Tigers, is it? Did you say Tigers or Titans? Uh, Tigers. Tigers. Right. Eels, Tigers, Rabbitohs, and then overcome a negative 84 points differential. Yeah. But that'll change if they win their last three. Neither of these teams are making the eight. Parramatta aren't. Well, I think the Roosters were better hope than your yeah, mob. Agreed. How? Well, if they 30, win... If they 32 could, points is the... They could win all three. Yeah. Yeah. They they're, they're not making and, it. And if they win all three, their four and against will sharply improve. And they could knock out South in that last game of the season. Hmm. I don't think for and against. They're not going to get there. Minus 84 is not going to... They're not going to turn that around enough for mine. Aren't they only two points out of the eight? How many points are they Yeah, two so? points out of the yeah. eight. So they can... They won't need to. If, if South lose... South See, could they've lose. Got a good, you, you look at that, and I'll be very interested if Sam Walker plays this weekend. Surely they've got to play him, don't they, Mick? Yeah. I know Hutchison had a blinder last week, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't, you I look at their centre, Smith and Manu. Is it... Many centres going better than Billy Smith at the Billy moment. Billy Smith, oh, it's, it's been, it's probably one of the great understated stories of the year, great. Billy Smith, Terrific. because, yeah. you know, for people that aren't in the Roosters in a sanctum like like mm. us, and all you all you could he- keep hearing is he's going to be a talent, he's going to be a talent, you know, he's he, he's a special player, and you just never saw it because he just kept getting injured. Now that he's been able to string some games together for the first time, he was outstanding on the weekend. Mm. Yeah. He was one of, if not That's their best player. That's what I mean, Bobsy. I think they could win three. I'll tell you what. I think they win the next two, then it's up against South. Yeah, but South are on what, 28 points? Yeah, they play they the get, They get a bye. If they, they beat the Knights, they're, they'll be in. Yeah, it's not easy to beat them up there in a full house. Why are you death riding the Roosters? I'm, Don't you like well-run they've got, football organisations? But hold on. Let me just take you two to task here. You, you're <laughs> saying... Right. so. I'm saying if they beat Newcastle, they will be in because they will go to 32 points and their yeah. for and against is plus 92. It doesn't take a mass genius to figure out yeah, the Roosters aren't The Roosters can them. still jump Newcastle because hmm. Newcastle, Newcastle play South and Cronulla. Yeah. Well, hold on. If Cronulla beat North Queensland tonight... Yeah, North Queensland's in trouble. Mm. Oh, I feel like we're going to... I don't know if you've analysed this properly, Adam. <laughs> well, the other guys, thing is, tell me, the way Canberra go, they're no good thing to beat the Bulldogs. No, if they Please, lose, if they lose they're that. Not. They're no that's good drama. thing to beat the Bulldogs. Oh, well. All right, who'd you tip? So, of course, I tip Canberra. Right. But I'm not saying they're a good. If thing. they don't beat Canterbury, <laughs> oh, Ricky should right. get sacked. What will you say about the, your uh, man, their own uh, coach? What will you their say? Their own coach stormed out of a presser last okay. week because he was so embarrassed. Pretend this is rugby league from every angle on Monday <laughs> night. Buzz, what did you make of the Raiders' performance on the weekend? What are you talking? What are you <laughs> gibbering about, you fool? <laughs> We're not NRL 360. This is my podcast. I just thought I'd pretend to be. And host. you're coming, you know. So if the, the Raiders are going to win on the weekend, imagine they lose. Look, of course, look, I think they'll win, but I yeah. I wouldn't be taking short odds and me. They'll win. If that performance up in Newcastle doesn't shame Canterbury into doing something a little bit more special. They got pumped a couple of weeks ago against Newcastle. It hasn't really changed their season. 
Right, uh, what's our next topic? I don't think you've analysed this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I've tried to explain to you, if the Roosters win, well, how many points are they on? They go level with the Cowboys? Mm-hmm. But not on four and against. They're mi- oh, it's the a Cowboys are minus 74. Four. It's a tough ask. It is a tough ask. And the, the Cowboys Roosters. aren't in the eight yet. So they've st- you're still talking about them jumping the ninth place team into ninth. I think if they win all I've three... I've just Roosters. tried to explain to you that Canberra no good things to make the eight. All right. Who did Canberra play next week? Uh, Broncos at home. Yep. And they, I think they got the Sharks last round. There you go. Mm. So I'm going to prepare you better next week. Uh-huh. I'm going to print out. I can't out. remember every time. What I'm going to do, home. I'm going to print out the run home just for you. Thank you, man. So you can oh, speak on this show with a little bit more <laughs> authority than what you've offered today. You just praised him five oh, minutes ago research. for all the people who was rattling off as middles off contract next in 25. Adam. This is a 40-minute podcast. I expect excellence. It's a, long half, it's a long half of footy. It's so unpredictable. Mm. It is a long half of footy. Um, how are your... i tell you what, Buzz. Talking top eight deciding games, your Sharkies, haven't they turned that around? They're... Um, and they got Who a big... Who we beat last week? Titans? Yeah. No big deal. Nah, you've... Um, week before, we beat a horrible south side in Perth. Although they stormed home. But everyone was talking about how South were going Look, to be I'm the really, next big I'm, thing. Look, uh, I'm ha- happy the way they're playing. Uh, and, and I love Nico being back in form. Yeah, good for him too. Can I g- tell you, Mick, yes. you know if we named, and I'm not into lists, but the top 10 most underrated players in the comp, mm. you know what I have very high up? A Cronulla front rower. Which one? Braden, Hamlin, Ueli. I think he's an outstanding forward. Yeah. Mobsy, would he make your top 10 underrated? Underrated? How many top 10s yeah. are we doing for next week? Top 10 buyers, top he's, 10. He's a, yeah, underrated. you look at the, you look Mate, at the man a good of, player. I'm just thinking about the amount of money that's spent in your club's forward pack with guys like Fanukan on big money and. McInnes is on good money, Rudolph's on good money. Yeah, and for Rudolph what you get. Up, on good money. And for what you get from Hamlin, Hamlin ULA, yeah, definitely. Just. I think he's our best middle. And one thing Cronulla's strong is middles. He's just a point of difference too. He's a bit more dynamic than some of the other That's boys. That's what I mean, yeah. Nick. It's but an, he it, never gets a rap. If we said three or four weeks ago which side would be more likely to finish in the top four, you would have said Cowboys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then the Sharks now... Like That's the, a huge game. If the Sharks win, they're genuine top four hope. If the Cowboys lose, then you question whether they're going to finish in the top eight. It is a mm. remarkable matchup. Looking yeah, forward no, to it. they're going good. Trindle's going well too. How do the nerves? Jesse Raymond's playing better. Connor Tracy's doing Will good. Will you be more fullback. nervous for the Sharkies tonight or the Matildas last night? Um, Matildas last night. National mm. National Beats Club stuff. Funny thing, being a Sharks fan, and but prior to 2016, but before the comp, mm. and we'd never experienced it. That's when you're so emotionally attached. Do you think it's diminished a little bit since you won a call? Oh, I'm just saying it goes away a little bit. Probably a bit more Did relieved. you agree with that? Well, you haven't been alive. <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, you haven't been alive. When were you born? 1980. Uh, so oh, I've been, well, you, you, I have you've been. had four cops. Yeah, but uh, you weren't a para fan. When do you... Oh. I'm, I've been a para fan as long as I can remember. Oh, well, I do I'll remember I'll give 86. you the 86. I don't remember 86. Well, but I defy you to tell no, me you 81, 82. I wasn't sucking on... My thumb watching the 81 G. Nah. I, I don't recall. <laughs> so, but yeah, I know, Buzz, because I'm feeling the, the emotion that you were feeling before 2016. I feel now with every year that goes on, yeah, 36 right. years, 37 <laughs> years. So thanks for bringing it up. I yeah, really right. appreciate it. That's all right. In 1981, <laughs> I was in the uh, auditorium when Jack Gibson said, Ding Dong, the Witch is dead. Mm. And you know, Newtown players turned up at the club about one o'clock. Have I told this story before? One in the morning, their thing, and Phil Gould walked in. Yep. I told it. Boring story. No, keep going. No, well, Gus. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Newtown players coming to coming the post game, post game final. Yeah. 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 It was nice. Wouldn't happen today. How good were yeah. auditoriums post games back in the oh, 90s? That was one yeah. of my mm. first memories. I can still yeah. see Jack on the stage, so. Saying ding dong, the window. It's unbelievable. I think the St. George Auditorium has been closed for like 20 years. Yeah, but then mm. you look out their windows and that, and they'll burn and come with a note. Mate, it was the, so much chaos that yeah. night. Wow. It was crazy. Well, you saw around 
Paris Stadium last year when they made the grand final. The whole week was insane. Yeah. So they go for could, another year. Could you imagine that night in 81 with phones and social media? Oh. Could you imagine it? Madness. Yeah. We would have had to make sure you were on your best behaviour that night. Yes. I was there with Les Muir, right old <laughs> rugby league writer. <laughs> Um, Buzz, your Sharkies, your next three games, they're almost four-point games, given that you play everyone in and amongst what your position at the moment. The Cowboys in ninth, the Knights in seventh, the Raiders in sixth. Mm. There's some, yeah, it, it's absolute moving day the well, next three weeks. they in their own hands. Mm, absolutely. And it's they've been really good the last few weeks, Cronulla. Oh, it, Ronaldo Molotalo seems like he's found a bit of form as well because yeah. I was worried about him. About a month ago, he looked like he was... Yeah, I mean, it looked like he hurt his ankle on the weekend too. But I thought he mm. was the best winger in the comp at the start of the year. I think we both had him for top try score, didn't we, in our predictions? Don't know. Mm. Don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Not sure. Pretty sure we did. Where are we going with this podcast? You're flattened out again. Oh, oh I'm trying to engage well, with you. I finally got just... my man talking. I'm, I'm trying to engage with <laughs> you. Like, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness right okay Ryan Pappenhausen hasn't yep. been named this week yep. got a full 80 minutes last week for the Sunshine Coast Falcons spoke to some Storm officials yesterday the potential for him returning next week against the Titans or maybe in round 27 I think he plays next week off the bench off the bench that's the early indication that he'll get some time um, in the all things you know, tracking nicely, you'll get some time off the bench next week. I think that's how you have to start him. Mm. Can't throw him Can him. you eventually, if they go into the finals, get him and Meany in the yep. side? Meany at centre. Meany at centre. Yeah. Has he played there? He's played a bit there. He's played everywhere in the back line. Mm. Um, they've had some troubles defensively with their, their edges, the the Storm, and we've seen them change with Justin Ollum getting dropped, your man yeah. Warbrick out of the side. So um, I think if he's going to slot in anywhere, Nick Meany's too good to not be in the starting side. Um, that's yeah. probably the way and I'd go. And his goal That's the way I'd go. Mm. To credit to Storm's professionalism and high performance, how they've nursed Pappenhausen with absolutely no pace, just yeah, really, really handled it well. And what a story for the finals if he's playing good footy. Um, I don't know if you did. saw there was an AFL player, Dacos, who I didn't. Uh, <laughs> he's. <laughs> He fractured his kneecap. He had a hairline fracture along it. And was talking about yeah, how what he, happened with him? Yeah, talk about how he obliterated his his um, kneecap. And well, you might want to talk to the bloke whose kneecap looked like a spider web with mm. twelve different places. One of the guys was telling me that, but when they got on the field and looked after him, they got him off and they'll push on his kneecap. It was just it was like it was spongy because oh. it was all moving yeah. from there. So to get from where he was to back on the footy foot, even just for the Falcons to where he is. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. What about the crowd that he's drawn to the Falcons and how he's yeah. embraced it? And yeah. It's good. He's a good, good, he's good, a good for guy. Yeah, good he's for footy. Good for rugby guy. league. Imagine if Brad Fittler had him in origin the last couple of years. As well, a he's probably been the most unlucky player because he's been in and around selections for the last couple of years and just got injured at the wrong time. Don't bag Tedesco. Don't say his spot's in jeopardy. You <laughs> no, know what happens there? You can't, you can't say We're that. We're trying to drive a wedge between him and Freddie, so do not are go gonna, there. Are you going to do the same between Teddy and Mal? No, I... Uh, how would... Oh my goodness gracious. Sorry for saying Walsh is... <laughs> sorry for saying Walsh should be under consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you pick on form? Reese Walsh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, you, 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 you're, you are trainable. You're not a lost cause. <laughs> well, you're looking at I me when like you say that. You a little bit. I like baiting you it's a little bit, leadership. and I got you there. Um, speaking of fullbacks, just on Nick Meany, what about this guy? So he he was on. He was, came to an end of his contract at Canterbury at the end of 21, and they offered him because their salary cap was a mess at the time, offered him less to stay than what yeah. he was Because he was on good money, offered. yeah. Because yeah. they signed him from Newcastle to be their starting fullback. Yes. Um, the Storm offered him even less, and he went to Melbourne for even yeah. less. And what a pickup he's been. And then it's since re-signed. Yeah, I think he went on a, was it a two-year deal initially? on. Yeah. Not a lot of money. Close and to minimum wage. Has reinvented himself and, you know, has filled in, Forget what he's done for, for Pappenhausen, but even at times last year when, you know, he played centre, wing, in the halves, and, you know, he's in there 17 every week. Yeah. And this, for a Bulldogs team that offered him basically nothing to stay. Yeah, or, but know, I, I don't low, think but he's 
his career, you don't know where his career would have been if he stayed at Canterbury. Mm. You know, well, you with, look at the teammates he left behind as with, to how they're going. With the systems that, he, that he's done there, the exposure that he's got, the halves that he's able to, and the hooker that he's been able to play alongside. Mm. You, you can't replicate that at, at what's happened at Canterbury. So he's, he's made the right decision. He would have gone for less, but now his value will be worth so much more if he does get up and, and want to leave to, to cement himself as an NRL week-in, week-out fullback, then he'll have that opportunity to, to do that because some club would sign him, no doubt. Yeah. Now, Buzzy, do you want to join the Mick and Mobs podcast over here or do you want to stay on your phone? You're a bit cranky about something. No, you insist that we have our phones on silent. I'm just looking at my message at 9.57, the great Brent Reid texted and said, who wants a coffee? He's downstairs. And because so I you was haven't on silent. I missed out. You haven't missed a breaking story. There's, you know, there's nothing that's going to tick over for the job. It's just you, you're, you're missing a, you're missing a flat wire. I'm coffee, mate. I'm tired. <laughs> I'll get you one when we get out of here. Let's let's go to mixed questions, listener questions. By the way, if if you haven't found out where to send the questions is. Uh, in Mick obviously sends out a note on Twitter usually Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday but generally, you can yeah. always uh, email you can email them sometimes I get some emails Michael.carianis what are you down on numbers why are we plugging no we've got no, heaps. Well, I was just oh, thinking that some people you know, are on Twitter and we could do an entire section of questions but Michael.carianis well, which is C-A-R-A a, 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 yeah how do you spell your name <laughs> go on have a go Carre <laughs> C-A-A C-A-A-R a y yeah. a double n i s boom there Kick. we go yeah, yeah so michael.carianis at news.com.au and if they're good they'll get read out if they're not i'll brush them <laughs> <laughs> i'll reply though if you email anyway mr j wants to know are the dragons gonna sign anyone at all for 2024 is that the is that his entire tweet to you no it was a bit other stuff that i just left out <laughs> What, what, are, he, what did you cut? He's one of Who your men. Who were you to edit stuff on my podcast? <laughs> no, it was praise for me, so I just oh, left that oh, bit oh. out. It was saying... What did he say? I can't remember. Oh, I can remember. Was it he was praising it, ABC, no, Stan, Telegraph, it was, it was in regard to a little stash that Michael might have been having lately with someone. And oh, right. Just saying, that he, just saying that he, he really rated oh, Michael. Discard. He loved listening to him on the... Uh, yeah, on the nice. podcast, and then ask one who, who the dragons are going to sign. And unfortunately, I don't have any good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of any. Well, they've obviously signed Harme Sele <laughs> next year from from South Sydney. Um, they want to sign Luke Thompson, um, but you know they need to move Musgrove on. Did Plano um, see miss eight tackles last week? He would have seen it. Kyle was playing, so I'm sure he watched. Mm. Uh, Fine um, is on the They're chopping block sign as well. Kyle? I would say yes. Mm. I would say yes, but puts pressure on him. It does. It does. What do you think? Do you think they'll sign Kyle? Probably, but I wouldn't. Mm. Can you see the value in him doing what Jackson Hastings and others have done by going to the UK and running a team over there? And and he's had yeah, that opportunity. He's had that opportunity, hasn't he? Yeah, Buzz? Yeah. And has mm. knocked it back. So it's interesting to see who Catalans are going to take for Pierce. Mm. Will it be Moylan? He probably doesn't want to go either, does he? Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, they've had a yeah, they've had Maloney, Pierce, so yeah. Yeah. they've had some big names there. They like it. Uh, the shoe wants to know: Could you see the change, the, the changes teams are making to avoid the hip drop in the Sharks Titans game on the weekend? It looked to be a number of times the tackles tacklers from both sides were around the waist, held on for dear life, rather than slipping down. I can't say I noticed it, hmm. but the shoe, I'm going to take that on board, and I'm going to watch closely for that this weekend. Yeah. Well, surely they've been getting the note that you you don't leave. You can't lose your legs. Lose your legs and swing. You yeah. know, you drive, you hold, you grab, you hold. I mean, it's different when you're trying to drag someone down from yeah. behind who's yeah. streaking away from you. But yeah, a paramount to look after players. This one's for you, safety. Buzz. Andrew wants to know if the Raiders missed the eight. Is there any pressure on Ricky to head towards a director of coaching type role, or is he still untouchable in the ACT? Um, when you say he's untouchable, um, I think he's earned the pass to be untouchable, um, whether he is or not. But the bottom line is, if you look in his roster, and for him at this stage of the season with that roster to be running six, I think he's done a fair job, pretty fair job with that roster. Yeah, that, uh, Your I comment? Think, no, no, I think if they finish in the bottom of the eight, that's a, part, <coughs> that's a decent season for them. They need to find... A uh, half for, for Jack Wyden. They finish ahead of the year. Roosters or South. It's phenomenal coaching. Compared their roster, Canberra to. Yeah, I th- I think you can say that about lots of clubs. Newcastle. 
You know, if Newcastle finish ahead of... So I give Ricky Mark at 10. For this year? Three. Yeah. No. <laughs> Five. Is that all? Oh, oh you're no. kid. No, no, I'll give, him, I'll give him six. I'll give him six at the moment. Um, I'll give him six for where they're at, where they're at on, the, on the ladder. What are they, sixth? Yeah, sixth. Tell you what I'd do. I'd take my checkbook and go talk to Ezra Mam's manager. Oh, yeah. Ezra Mam's on what? 320,000 240. Yeah. Yeah. And say, listen, here's 800 for 25. Yep. Sign here. Um, Come on down. Steve wants to know what justifies our success in taking the NRL to Vegas, aside from you getting on the junket bus? What justifies the success? Um, well, it's a good PR thing. Just a, it's a spectacular way to launch the rugby league season and the widespread media coverage it's going to get here and an exciting way to launch a season. Yep. Um, I don't. Th- I don't think we know if it's a success until years, what two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. If we're getting, uh, you know, because a lot of people that are going to go are going to be Australians or mm. people that are, oh, of course, from yeah, from yeah. here, right? If we get into a point where in year two, year three, it's becoming an event for the Americans to get to, then I think that's a, a success in a way. I'd rather us try stuff like this than not. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, hmm. I agree. I, I'm not going to be, even if it um, it happens once and it doesn't work out, I'm not going to um, be critical of the game for trying new markets and trying to broaden the, the, hmm. the scope of uh, the audience. TV ratings in the US will be very interesting as well to see whether they engage with rugby league and you're looking at it the time of year that it is your post super bowl yep. you don't have to fight against that so interesting the uh, boss mobs here fox sports in america has been out here for the world cup and he caught up with peter volandish yesterday to chat about you know ways of they can beam the show across the united states mm. i don't expect a massive audience first year russell crowe will help hugh jackman all that sort of thing but it's something to build on you got to start somewhere Yep. I agree. Buzzy, Andrew wants to know, specifically, can you ask Buzz why he thinks Gus turning over the Bulldogs roster is a bad idea? When he took over, they'd won six of their last 42 games. I reckon even the ball boys deserve the sack. <laughs> yeah, look, I said on 360 the other day, they've had 67 players in the last three years, right? Now, Cronulla, as an example, have had 38 players. And they've got a real stable roster that competes every year, makes the finals every year. And I think what Canterbury is crying out for, in my opinion, is to have an environment there without as many people walking on eggshells. Yeah. And they need to settle that roster down. Why did they buy Pangai Jr. in the first place? My, my, what? sorry, Buzz, you want to? Yeah, you go. My, my criticism, as I said earlier, is the blokes that they've signed, that mm. Phil Gould, Cameron Serrato have signed, and three of the four were let go before July, and then uh, Franklin Pele lasted one season of a two year deal. These are blokes mm. they signed. This is not something they inherited. This was not something that was not of their own doing. They signed these guys. Josh Reynolds, I can cop, right? That was a bit of a Hail Mary play, mm. a feel-good story. They got him there. But the other guys are guys that, you know, Andrew Davey played, what, two games maybe, if yeah, that. Yeah, And you've got to look at the situation that you're in at the moment because it's, it's almost unprecedented. With the, the rise in the salary cap this year means that teams are able to play, pay players to retain them, which dried up the free agency market a lot. So there's not that many good replacements available. So yeah. then you're going to have to go into this thing of paying overs. You know, you've seen this with Phil Gould mm. before. Um Paying guys on long-term deals, they're not seeing it out, and then you're paying them to play elsewhere. So you saw that happen with um, Penrith. Penrith they dismantled Gus's roster. Hmm. But and that so what that comes back to, Buzz, is consistency in your roster. And they're not all duds at Canterbury. You know, you've got to no. put the right guys in place. But consistency helps. Defending week in, week out, not knowing the bloke who's in left centre next to you or, or the, if you're the back rower who's mm. defending to your right and you've got to build combinations and that takes time and consistency and, and putting guys through the club like this as often as they do you're not going to get anywhere with it yep it's hard to argue and they've made do some... you think they're a happy club at the moment no uh, no I don't think they are how can you be happy with what's yeah. going on there mm. nope and I think there'd be a few players who are on eggshells walking on eggshells worrying about their futures 
I'll tell you who's relieved about the Tigers. And, Is and your the... wife home this weekend? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yes. I was worried about you. <laughs> Didn't have to put out a missing persons report. Yeah. I follow <laughs> Cassie on uh, Facebook. So I know when she's out there. It's <laughs> yeah. on the cruise or... No, no. With Maddie at the swimming titles. No, no, no. She's uh, she's home this weekend, so you have to spend some time with Mobsy's me. Mobsy's not. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> I hope you're going to have some quality time, mm. Adam. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, we will. You're going to cook dinner tonight. Can we I am. To dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I am. I'm. Um, I'm going to whip Tell up us. a carbonara tonight. So, where well, yeah, quick menu? Um. Well, you got to go and get a. Um. I'm just going to heat this one up. But Is that with nice the bacon in? Yeah. So and what else? Bacon, cream. Yeah, bacon cream. You get a little bit of cheese on top, and um, the wife isn't too big on the meat on it. So, yeah, but right. yeah, I'm I'm a what pretty simple guy. What time do you serve this up? Well, we'll have this ready in time for what well, time I'll be home. Uh, the young bloke's home from soccer about half past seven, so right. just after that. So you're giving yourself an early mark here to go and shop at half past seven. hardly an early <laughs> mark. No, well, it is for me. A, mate, he's got a shop. Yeah, it's got to get the ingredients. Ingredients are already been bought. Got to cook. They don't. It's, it's all about preparation, Buzz. Buzz, I did all this shopping on I Sunday when I was home alone. Sunday, oh, that. Buzz won't be happy with that. <laughs> Have you got a use by? Yes, I, I knew <laughs> that. <laughs> ingredients. Oh. It's not. A, do you shop every day for your food? I like to keep things fresh in my house. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not processed food man. I would rather go to the shops more times than throw stuff out. I tell you, my I'm going to go home, start Sunday's column, mm. and. Um, have a nap. That's I'm going to fresh, log on to <laughs> Bangkok Bites at about half past six yep. and order for seven o'clock pickup jungle chicken curry. Just yourself? Mm. No, I'll find out what my wife and son would like. In preparation for the game tonight? That's mm. the most popular. Yeah, yeah. The jungle chicken curry is back, baby. <laughs> is it? Oh, so you're happy with it? <laughs> it's not as good as the old joint, but, but it's mm. good. Serviceable. We're having apparently beef and dumplings casserole. Really? Oh, apparently. You don't do dumplings in a casserole. <laughs> that is what's on the menu. I've just... You take steam it with Mrs. Them. You steam them, mate. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Well, I'll send you a photo. Yeah, please This is an untried <laughs> recipe, so it could be... A no, my wife cooks really well. Will you support me? You either fry or steam... No, I'm a steamed dumplings guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You don't like, I don't like fried dumplings. You don't casserole I love, them? I need I love, evidence. I want to see I what's love, um, Yeah, I love steamed dumplings. Oh yeah, but okay. No, so, well, well, all I'm saying, it's great to have the Mobs family back. <laughs> <laughs> hey? All right, Buzzy, take us out. <laughs> Thank you for watching my and listening to my podcast. See you later, guys. Yeah.